My name is Dr. Jim Brazen. I'm a turf grass professor at the University of Tennessee. Our lab conducts a lot of work on poa control and Bermuda grass every season. In this video, we're going to talk about overlapping soil residual herbicides for extended control uh, of poa in non overseeded Bermuda grass. So when we think about trying to control POA and non-overseeded Bermuda grass, it's a lengthy endeavor. You know, typically uh, here in Eastern Tennessee, we might initiate a herbicide program in late August or early September, and we're hoping that we have coverage against POA infestation all the way through April uh, of the following spring. That's well over a 200 day period, and it's a lot to ask of any single treatment to provide us uh, coverage for that length of time. One of the things that's been uh, more widely used in recent years is herbicide mixtures that have com combinations of both pre-emergence and post-emergence herbicides paired together. Reasons for that are multifaceted. One, there's a resistance management piece. If we can diversify our modes of action, it's gonna help us uh, manage herbicide resistant populations. And two, it allows us to have post-emergence activity on plants that have already emerged from the soil, as well as residual control of those that are yet to emerge. In this trial and in several trials we'll look at today, what we wanted to test was the concept of overlapping residuals. Trying to decide, can we position our high-powered mixture treatment adjacent to another residual application, and if doing so would provide us greater control than just using a mixture alone with no residual before it. So in our first plot here, this is a non-treated check. This is a TIF way, a hybrid Bermuda grass fairway, heavy infestation of POA. This is where we do a large majority of our POA control work for Bermuda grass fairways at the University of Tennessee, where the day of this filming here, probably 85 to 90% POA cover. So a very heavy infestation. So when we think about a treatment that's working well, it's doing it under a high pressure scenario. Next treatment we'll look at, this is a very standard treatment. It's been a standard for a long time. This is an application of Barricade, a soil residual herbicide that controls POA as it emerges from seed in the fall. This was applied on September 11, 2023, and we can see here really good control. This is a Barricade susceptible population. We would expect the response to be really positive, and we can see in this plot that it certainly is. Next treatment, this is referred to by many in the turf grass industry as a pre-3 program. This is combining spectacle, a, a soil residual herbicide, with tribute total, a post-emergence herbicide with multiple active ingredients, and then Princep together in a three-way mixture. And this has a lot of utility for POA control in non-overseeded Bermuda grass situations. Here, this is an application that was made according to an emergence model that was developed at the University of Tennessee. Our lab worked to better understand when POA would emerge from soil in a TIF way Bermuda grass scenario. And we learned that emergence most rapidly changed when soil temperatures for a seven day window at a two inch depth were cooler than 66. And if we had moisture in the soil when that benchmark temperature was reached. And we use that now as a guide for when to make our mixture applications. So this is an application of, of spectacle plus tribute plus princept as soon as those benchmark emergence conditions were reached. And we can see here our control uh, is fairly strong. Next treatment that we'll look at, a uh, little bit of a different spin uh, on the PRE-3 program. Here, we've applied it on the same timing, but we've added five ounces of Roundup Pro to the tank. This has been something that many golf course superintendents have asked about, uh, the addition of five ounces of Roundup to some of our standard herbicide treatments for POA control made in the autumn. And we can see here our POA control is fairly good and we have no ill effects on Bermuda grass greenup from that Roundup addition. Our next treatment here, this is now combining residuals. This is, we have an application of Barricade that was applied at a pre-emergence timing on September 11th. And then this is coming in with our pre-3 treatment 
on our model timing. So that would be September 25th. So we have a, a layer of residual activity from barricade, and then we're overlapping that with the residual activity that comes from our pre-3 program. And we can see that our POA control from that is, is excellent. So here, what we're looking at, again, this is another example of overlapping residuals. This is barricade uh, applied at our pre-emergence timing on September 11th, and a pre-3 treatment applied on September 25th, as soon as we met our model conditions for emergence, but now we've added Roundup to our pre-3 mixture uh, applied at that time. The idea in the next treatment was simple, that We've looked at our mixture treatments for a long time applied according to this emergence model that I've referenced. And often they look really, really promising uh, throughout early spring, but when we get later into the season, and by later I would say that's defined as March through April, we tend to see those programs run a little bit out of gas and, and not give us the control we would hope for. Our concept here was, well, let's delay our application of our high-powered mixture, our pre-3 program, to as late in the fall as we possibly can. So we position it as close as possible to that period in the spring uh, where a treatment may run out of gas. So instead of now making this pre-3 application uh, on September 25th, as soon as our emergence conditions uh, were met via our emergence model, we delayed and we put our residual program out on December 4th. So this is barricade applied September 11th, and then our pre-3 mixture applied what would be defined as late on December 4th, and our control from doing that, overlapping the residuals of both for as long as we possibly can is, is really strong. So our next treatment here, uh, kind of the same concept, where we have our barricade application that went out September 11th as a standard pre-program, and we're gonna overlap our residual uh, with a pre-3 mixture, a mixture of spectacle flow, uh, plus tribute, plus princep, but now we've added Roundup Pro to that, that pre-3 mixture as well. So we have barricade pre, and then overlapping that with residuals of spectacle flow plus tribute plus princep plus roundup, with that going out late season December 4th. So we're taking full advantage of the residual chemistry of both components of the regime here, and our control is, is really strong. So we're gonna look at a second trial here that's focused on a new herbicide called StayGuard. The active ingredient in StayGuard is the same as in SureGuard, which is a liquid product that's been used in turf for several years. The difference is with the liquid product SureGuard, we can't apply it to green Bermuda grass that's actively growing. With StayGuard, the product is formulated as a granular, so we can put it on to green Bermuda grass uh, as long as we water it into the soil immediately after application. In the trial that we'll, we'll walk right now, what we're gonna look at is applications of StayGuard alone or in an overlapping residual program and look at differences in control. So the first plot that you can see in front of me, this is a non-treated check plot, really heavy POA pressure, again, in a 419 fairway site, all you could ask for from a research grade level of infestation. Next plot, this is a single application of StayGuard. This was applied on September 18th at a rate of 300 pounds per acre. You can look at this and the control here as we filmed this in March, not a super high, but September 18th was a long time ago, right? And the, the residual control of StayGuard is not enough to go from September through March. Uh, there needs to be overlapping residuals uh, to give us the level of control that we want over a time domain that's that long. Next plot here, this is StayGuard again at that same 300 pound rate, but now we're delaying our application until later on in the year. This was applied November 13th. A little bit better uh, in terms of overall control, but not something that would be called a success. And in large part, that's because there's not enough residual from a single StayGuard application to get from November through March of the following spring. 
So what we have here, this is an application of Stegard at that same November timing, mixed with Princep and Tribute Total. So those are liquid sprays. So we would put our granular application of Stegard down and then spray immediately thereafter with Tribute Total and Princep. And our application rate of Stegard here is a little lower. This is a 200 pound per acre application rate. Control fairly good from the POA standpoint, maybe a little bit of a setback here in terms of our Bermuda grass greenup. This is a similar concept, so everything applied in November, but here our Stegard rate's a little higher. So here we're 300 pounds per acre of Stegard as a granule, followed by Princep in tribute total as a foliar spray. From a POA control standpoint, we're excellent. And then our last treatment kind of ties it all together. So this is that same concept of overlapping residual where we have a stay guard application here. This was applied at 200 pounds per acre on September 18th. And then we have another application of stay guard combined with Princep and Tribute Total at that 200 pound per acre rate applied on November 13th. So we have the residual from the first stay guard application that's giving us some early protection overlapped with the residual from the second stay guard application combined with Princep and Tribute. Layering those two things on top of one another has given us what we've needed to have a clean plot here in springtime. The last few treatments we'll look at here, uh, this is just an expansion on what we talked about with StayGuard. Um, this will be with SureGuard again. So this is the same actor ingredient applied uh, as a liquid. Uh, and as mentioned, we can't put that on green turf. We have to put that on Bermuda grass when it's dormant uh, in, in winter. So in this trial, we, it's really small. We just have three treatments to look at. The first treatment here is non-treated check plot. Our next treatment, this is Cheetah Pro, uh, which is a non-selective herbicide. Active ingredient is glufosinate mixed with SureGuard SC, the liquid formulation at 10 fluid ounces. This was applied on February 6th for post POA control in a dormant stand of Tahoma 31 Bermuda grass. We can see that our control here of POA has been fairly good. Maybe a little bit of delay in the green up of the Tahoma uh, from the application being made in February. And here for our last treatment, uh, all we've done is we have the same combination of Cheetah Pro and SureGuard, but we've reduced our Cheetah Pro rate. Uh, we've gone from 82 ounces in the previous treatment down to 40 ounces in this treatment. We can see from a control standpoint on the POA front, things are really good and our Bermuda grass quality is higher because our glufosinate load has been reduced. We wouldn't recommend that you use Cheetah Pro standalone at these lower rates, but having an additive mixture with SureGuard can be helpful in getting a similar POA control response, maybe with a little bit lower dose of glufosinate at this dormant timing. That takes us to an end of this overlapping residual concept for this year. Uh, this is something that our lab's gonna continue to work on and, and, and put trials out focused on the idea of overlapping residual herbicides, ideally in mixtures for POA control. If there are any treatments that are of interest to you, please let us know and we will do our best to work them into forthcoming trial work.